Have you ever heard the expression, measure twice, cut once? Yeah, well, it doesn't just apply to woodworkers. It also applies to jewelry makers like myself. My name's Edik and I'm the artist and order behind Dory Me bracelets, etc., where I upcycle musical instruments, strings, and pieces to create amazing jewelry and gifts. In this case, a snare string bracelet, like this one. Well, it's beautiful. Only problem is it's a size seven and a half in circumference and I need a size eight. Good news for you is that I'm going to be taking you along and showing you how I made it because I'll be making you a new one. So first things first, what are snare strings? Well, snare strings are these coiled um, wire that are typically placed under a snare drum, percussion instrument, and it creates sort of a sharp, I'm going to try and reproduce the sound here, like a rattle type sound under the um, skin, which is the cover of the uh, snare drum. And so in this case, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking six strands or pieces of this to create the uh, bracelet like this. But in this case, instead of a size seven and a half bracelet, I'm going to be creating a size eight bracelet, which is what the customer asked for. We're simply going to start by cutting off six strands. Two, three, four, five, oops, <laughs> six strands here. And then I'm going to be measuring it off to make sure that I've got the right size, the right diameter for uh, this bracelet. Having a good set of wires, good set of wire cutters is essential to this step. And of course, measuring twice, making sure I am properly at that eight inch mark. I will be then again cutting these wires to, as the next step. As I said, measure twice, cut once, really making sure that I'm at that eight inch mark and I'll be cutting them here to make sure that I've got the right size and then I'll be heading on to the next step. So as you can see I made sure to cut all six strings approximately the same length so that when I put on the actual um, piece that's going to be holding them together the entire bracelet is going to be uniform. So there's a little bit of glue that was added again to those pieces and that I'm going to use this crimp piece and it's going to hold all of these uh, strings together. Now I do use my fingers quite a bit to be able to fold these down because I don't want uh, my tools to be damaging uh, the crimp. If I do use my tools, I'll use a cloth like this to hold it in place and then I'm going to crimp the second side down. But for now, I'm just going to again use my fingers to try and fold it down as much as possible. And now I'm going to use that plier to end, finish up the process and just make sure that these are nice and tight. So here we have the first piece on, holding down all of these strings, and I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. We now have a length of six strands of snare string, and still using my fingers, I'm just going to progressively slip them through and over my fingers, like so, to coax them into the shape that I want. So that C-type shape that you can see in this bracelet here. So it's just about keeping them together because I do want them to have that uniform shape. Um, I do want them, as you can see in this bracelet here, they're, you know, all together. So I do have to make sure that I'm holding it pretty tightly as I am bending them and just coaxing them. <laughs> Come on, cooperate. And uh, yeah, so it's 
you know, a fairly straightforward task. The only thing is because of the fact that they are coiled, um, putting on those uh, end crypts can be complicated sometimes. Um, there have been times where I have damaged the crimps um, using pliers, you know, with too much force or um, not holding the wires properly and then um, they twisted in the wrong way and so I had them come and separate and so I had to start over. Um, you know, but I think Bob Ross is the one who said, you know, there are no mistakes, just happy little accidents. So it's about learning. It's about, you know, refin you know refining my technique, um, getting better and finding tips and different tricks that make this, you know, more efficient or, or effective, you know, give a better final product. And so it's really then just about, as I said, getting some lovely marks on my fingers here <laughs> from the wires. But um, I do, as I said before, I don't often um, use pliers when I am bending my strings. Um, as I said, I really like, I think it's the musician in me, I like playing with the strings. They're not making a lot of music in this, in this way. Maybe this one does. Not much. No music talent required. And so it's just about finishing that with that C type shape. We're getting close to uh, this one here. So then we're going to be, well, not we, well, you're going to be doing it with me. I'll be putting on these uh, loops and then the lobster claw clasp and then we'll have it done. Here we go. I always like to play a game when I'm taking these um, jump rings out of the bag to see if I can grab, I need four, and I just pinch them out of the bag and I'm going to see one, two, three, four. Ah, oh, I lost. I got five. Back in the bag you go. <laughs> just a little game I play sometimes. Now I said that I don't often use pliers or tools, but for this part it's kind of useful. So it's just a question of opening up the jump ring, putting it in hole and then closing it making sure that both sides are touching and that both sides are even and then repeat this time adding the lobster claw clasp in case you're wondering why I'm calling it a lobster claw I'm not the one who gave it the name but kind of looks like a little lobster claw and so hence the name I think it's kind of cute I prefer them to the rounded um, clasps I, I just like the look and I find that with them being longer here um, they're just easier to reach over and open versus the ones that are simply round. That's just a personal preference. Obviously you could do this with whatever type of clasp you'd want, but this is how I do it at Dory Me Bracelets, etc. Did I mention my website? <laughs> Dory Me Bracelets, etc. .ca, where you can find all of these beautiful pieces of jewelry. I will put the link in the show notes if you want to go take a look and see what other percussion type creations I make piano violin guitar cello even saxophone reeds and there we have it so we now have a finished bracelet now the moment of truth let's measure it to make sure that we've got the right length Okay, so the moment of truth. So whenever you're measuring a bracelet, you always want to make sure that you're measuring the inside of the bracelet because even with one as narrow as this one, if I was to measure the outside, just the um, thickness of the bracelet would make it, um, would actually skew the measurement. So again, making sure that we're going to have the right size. And huzzah, eight inches, fabulous. Right size, 
just finish up making sure that I'm just finishing up the little final details of the shape and shipping it off to its new owner. I hope you liked the video. If you did, like, subscri subscribe, subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for new videos shortly coming up from Doremi bracelets, etc where we upcycle musical instruments, strings, and pieces, because I believe that music does not belong in the trash. Have a fabulous day.